tradition. Um, so right after the service, if we could stand right up there, move right there, very, very quickly, that's our hope and goal and joy and dream. Can it happen? Yes. We're gonna find out. Miracles, this is the day's miracles. You're lucky there's no coffee out. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning and happy Easter and welcome to the Guilford Community Church and welcome to those who are watching. If you're seated near the center aisle, please sign our registration book. And if you're visiting and would like to be included on the church email network, please include your email when you sign in as well. Big thanks to our flower committee for decorating the sanctuary for Easter. And if you purchased lilies, you can pick one up after the service. And we do have... A lot of musicians today, and AJ is going to introduce everyone. Um, first, a uh, special thank you to the choir for all the work that they always do every Sunday, but especially today. Um, our bonus musicians today are uh, Nathan Shower, our old friend. Um, we get to see him at Christmas and Easter, and sometimes in the summer too. Uh, so happy that he's over here. Um, Chuck Schubert is playing uh, baritone today. He played with his last Easter too. Uh, he comes from Brownfield, Maine. Um, Tyler Nado is my student teacher, um, and this is part of his grade. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, uh, May Stewart and Shannon Wright joining us. But you know, we know them pretty well anyway. And Will Gunn. Um, who else? Warren singing. Um, Annie. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and now just take a moment to reflect on why we've gathered here today.
So beautiful. Thank you so much. Please stand and join me in our call to worship, then we'll do the song. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Easter one. Among us. In a world of death. Battle us with spirit of life. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And then remain standing as we sing together hymn number 233, Christ the Lord is risen today. Please be seated and join me in a word of prayer. How beautiful, how empowering the energy of those ignited by a dream. How filled with life and song and passion. May we catch the joy in all that swept up their hearts long ago and cast them toward a more beautiful tomorrow. And may we know, even in our darkest moments, the hope they experienced. May it draw us into a harmony, fill us, filling us with a passion all our own. Breathe into our being, even as we pray in the name of the risen Christ, the prayer that Jesus taught, a prayer that began, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Mark 
Mark 16, verses 1 through 8. After the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene, Salome, and Mary the mother of James bought some spices to put on Jesus' body very early on Sunday morning. Just as the sun was coming up, they went to the tomb. On their way, they were asking one another, who will roll the stone away from the entrance for us? But when they looked, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away, and it was a huge stone. The woman went to the tomb, and on the right side, they saw a young man in a white robe sitting there. They were alarmed. The man said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus from Nazareth, who was nailed to a cross. God has raised him to life, and he isn't here. You can see the place where they put his body. Now go and tell his disciples, and especially Peter, that he will go ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. When the woman ran from the tomb, they were confused and shaking all over. They were too afraid to tell anyone what had happened. Here ends today's reading.
Thank you, choir. That was wonderful. Great job. And if the kids will stay up front, and if any other kids want to come forward, just come on forward right now. That was wonderful. Good morning. It must, it must be a special day. <laughs> but what, what day is it? Sunday. Easter Sunday. It's great to have all of you here today and the kids just did your song. I love it. I'll probably be singing that song all afternoon long. <laughs> Jesus was a cool dude. <laughs> this year when I was thinking about Easter, that the thought that I couldn't get out of my mind was that Easter is about surprises. The ladies who went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body, which was a common burial practice, certainly were surprised when the tomb was what? It was empty. So surprises. Now, a lot of us, especially the guy who's speaking, 
don't always handle surprises real well. I kind of like knowing what the agenda is and sticking to the plan, but I think surprises are important. And so, can of what? SpaghettiOs. Can of sliced peaches. Okay, who wants sliced peaches? Okay, who wants SpaghettiOs? Okay, now, here's the choice. This is a mystery can. It could have something really scrumptious, like maybe sweet cherries, dark... Or, well, I've never, I've never seen broccoli in a can. <laughs> but I have on pretty good authority, this could be a can of beets. Who likes beets? I love, I love beets. Huh? But, it, but it might be a can of onions too, those fancy onions. So, who now, you have three, you have three choices. Or maybe I filled this with money. Okay, now, who wants the peaches? Well, of course it depends, but you, you have to take the chance. This is like that game show Bonnie Hall used to do. Let's make it, what is it called? Let's make, it, let's make a deal. Do you want door number one? This is door number one. This is door number two. Door number three. Could be a big payoff. Could be a can of beets. Which do you want? Three. Ah, uh, sorry, it's a can of beets, but... Um, <laughs> Always, always be open to surprises. And I bet many people who came to church today were surprised at that great song that you sang this morning. We, we probably heard it. You, you were surprised you didn't practice it? We, we could not tell. We could not tell that you didn't practice it. But next time we'll move that big microphone over so that everyone can hear a little bit better. But I think... I think Amber's going to take you out, yeah. and you're going to have a great time in Sunday school today.
Thank you, Will and Nathan. That was so beautiful. Please stand and join me as we sing together hymn number 242, The Strife is O'er. I'm a little bit nervous, just a wee bit. Not because all of you are here, because it's Easter, but because I'm going to try something I've never tried before. I know most of us, myself included, don't deal with change too well. And I debated kind of running the idea by Stacy and the deacons to get their permission But, what the heck, I said to the kids, Easter is about surprises. Of course, most of us sit in the same pew every single week. We never try anything new or novel. So I did think about trying to clear this with someone above my pay grade. It's not the normal way to begin an Easter sermon. But whether you like this idea or not, the good news is that in about 12 minutes, it'll be over and you'll be on your way to the Easter brunch. But if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, this this might become a tradition right right alongside some other great traditions like Guilford Old Home Day and our Christmas fair. So take, take a deep breath. Unbuckle your seatbelts and get ready. You see, now, I'm stalling a little bit because I am a little bit nervous, but in a year's time, you have to listen to me preach for about nine and a half hours. It's a lot of time, isn't it, to listen to this guy talk? Fortunately for you, they're broken down into 10 or 12 minute segments, so they're manageable. But still, it's a lot of me talking, and when it comes to Easter, Most of you probably already know what I think. I've been doing Easter sermons. This will be my 23rd Easter sermon. 
And I'm always tempted just to recycle an old sermon on a day like today. But I want to try something new. I had Melissa print all of the names of the people who come here regularly. And then I, I added a few as I saw people come in. And I'm just going to pull out three or four. We'll see how it goes. And just... And if you're visiting from Pembroke, don't think you're off the hook. Your name could be in here. But just share a thought. Easter in your own words. If someone were to ask you, what does Easter mean to you, what would you say? Certainly you wouldn't say, my minister thanks. And don't worry about being too articulate. I have lowered the bar when it comes to articulate. There's a wonderful poem by Mary Oliver that goes this way. Pay attention, then patch a few words together, and don't try to make them elaborate. This is not a contest, but a doorway, a doorway into thanks. So remember, when you come forward, it's not a contest. We're not trying to impress anyone. Just patch together a few words. Okay, are you ready? Everyone ready? Okay. Okay, let's see. Bob Souter, but I don't think... Bob is here today. <laughs> Bob Souter, we know you're not here today. Okay. Uh, here's another person I think is in Florida, Linda Knightley. Oh, golly sakes. Janet Haley, not here. Of course, I knew those people wouldn't be here. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't spring something like that on you without warning, but now you are warned. So next year, there probably won't be half as many people here. But if I were out there in the pews, I am certain I would have been experiencing a lot of different emotions the last few minutes, most of them not positive. But that's exactly what the women who went to the tomb experienced. They went there trembling and be, be, bewildered. And then they fled the tomb because they were seized with fear. They were told to pass on the news that Jesus would meet them in Galilee but they said nothing to no one because they were fear, filled with fear. When it comes to human emotions, not much has changed the last 21 centuries. And it's hard for most of us to think outside of the box. But Easter is definitely a day that invites us to do that. And Easter Sunday is a day we are given permission, despite what goes on in the world, to shout, Hallelujah, he is risen. But maybe with all that's wrong with our country and our world, maybe we're plagued by worry, not feelings of joy and happiness. So on a day like today, it is perfectly appropriate to ask ourselves, does Easter still mean anything to anyone? Or is it just a gay day for families to get together? And if we want to find meaning and perhaps a doorway to hope, where do we begin? I think we begin right where those ladies began. Bewildered and baffled and confused, worried and fearful. And if that's the starting point, then most of us are exactly ready for Easter. For all of us know something about those emotions the one looking for affordable housing in the Lakes region sure does. The couple whose marriage is about to crumble. The single mom or single dad struggling with childcare, struggling to pay their bills. The retired couple who anticipated the golden years but can't afford their property taxes the young person who has realized his sexual orientation 
is going to completely rock his family and turn their world upside down. The teenage girl crossing her fingers, hoping that she might not be with child. Yes, every single one of us knows something about being fearful, fearful of fear and worried, not knowing where in the world to go or to whom to turn. And before we can ever experience authentic joy, we have to come face to face with death and despair. Primo Levi tells the episode from one of the Nazi concentration camps that he was a survivor at, Primo Levi. Close your eyes and kind of picture this as a large pile of corpses. And the death squad is sorting out the tangle of corpses. Their task, their task was to wash these bodies and then take them to the crematorium where they might be disposed of. But amid that huge pile of bodies, they find a woman still alive. They're completely startled and stunned. They're prepared to deal with death. They're not prepared to handle life. Like the women in the gospel, they're seized with fear. They don't know what to do. In an act of courage, they take her body, they clean her off, they warm her, they feed her. And in time, not only is she brought back to life, they are transformed by her life. That is, to me, what Easter is all about. In a world of death, in a world of despair, every once in a while, we are confronted with flickers of light, light that gets through the cracks we work so hard to hide and pretend are not there. But the cracks are there. And if we allow the light, it will transform us. For me, the miracle of Easter is never about something that may or may not happened a long time ago, but about tapping into the life source at work in the universe right here, right now. The English poet Sidney Carter wrote a wonderful little poem called The Present Tense. Your quoting hearsay is not evidence. Give me the good news in the present tense. What happened 1900 years ago may not have happened. How am I to know? The living truth is what I long to see. I cannot lean upon what used to be, so shut the Bible up and show me the Christ you talk about is living now. That's what it's all about. Living open to the spirit of the crucified Christ so that the Jesus we talk about in places like this might be seen and experienced in the world. The French existentialist Albert Camus, hardly a Christian, but he wrote these beautiful words. In the, mid in the midst of the winter of life, I finally learned that there was in me an invisible summer. That is Easter, an invisible summer. Easter isn't about dead men walking, but a spirited transformation in this world. And I believe that because I have seen people, some of them right here, who have discovered that invisible summer in the midst of winter, who have been called from despair to the possibility of new life. People who refuse to be imprisoned by the past and its long hatred, who have stepped out of their fear the tomb of their fear, who refused to be gripped by the season of winter. When we say we believe, that only has meaning if we are people who live courageously and love lavishly. So let's look for those flickers of light, those signs of love, and then let's be quicker to light candles than to curse the darkness. And let this always be a house of prayer for all people. May it be true. Amen. And now please stand as we close this service singing hymn number 238, Now the Green Blade Rises.
And now having gathered together for worship, may we go forth with a great sense of joy, purpose, passion, and peace, knowing that love has come again and rises like the green wheat. Amen.